This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and Ray Kong. On last week's episode, we talked a bit about President Trump's big comeback rally in Tulsa and how despite having a projected attendance of one million people, when it came time for the event, less than a third of the seats at the venue were even filled. How could this have happened? Is the president just really that unpopular, even in a part of the country that overwhelmingly voted for him last time? Are people just really scared of the virus? Or was it TikTok teens and K-pop stands using burner emails to RSVP as many times as possible to the event with no intention of actually attending? And that's the fun version. I, that's the one I'd like to believe. Yeah. But we may never know. Uh, what we do know is that the whole thing very much upset the president. He was a very angry boy. Mm -hmm. From the New York Times, the president, who had been warned aboard Air Force One that the crowds at the arena were smaller than expected, was stunned. And he yelled at aides backstage while looking at the endless rows of empty blue seats in the upper bowl of the stadium, according to four people familiar with what took place. From NBC News, President Donald Trump is furious at the underwhelming crowd at his rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma on Saturday evening, a major disappointment for what had been expected to be a raucous return to the campaign trail after three months off because of the coronavirus pandemic, according to multiple people close to the White House. And of course, from the Washington Post. On the flight to Tulsa, Trump was unhappy with television images of the sparse crowds and vacant seats. He continued to fume aboard Air Force One on the way back to Washington, and on Sunday, according to officials with knowledge of the conversations who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to speak publicly, the president complained that his aides should have known about the efforts to embarrass him, and he argued that potential attendees were further scared away by his campaign's public confirmation that six members of the advanced team tested positive for the novel coronavirus, the official said. Why did we tell him that we were infected? Yeah. Obviously, it's going to scare him. But look, if, if unnamed sources aren't your thing, well, here's the big man himself getting off Marine One back at home, looking like absolute dog shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ties undone, spray tan smudged all over his shirt collar, just low energy, sad. And for a person who really, really cares about his public image, for whatever reason, because it's terrible, but he mm -hmm. still cares about it, this was a rare glimpse at a person who legitimately looks broken. Yeah, looks like, uh, you know, he got, he got a little too drunk before... On a, on a work night, coming back into the The boss office. just yelled at him. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, anyways, those cruel TikTok teens, they really did a number on our president. Mm -hmm. And apparently they're not done yet. Their latest tactic is what's called shopping cart abandonment, where they're encouraging people to go to the Trump 2020 online store, fill up their shopping cart, and then never check out. Yeah, apparently this is a thing. Shopping cart abandonment has been written about a bunch in recent years, and it seems to be a big problem in the e-commerce world. Typically it's like, if, if, if the old way to get a discount, I don't even know if it works anymore, but was to add something to your cart and leave it, and then they'd email you and be like, hey, you forgot this. Maybe, yeah. maybe we sweeten the deal a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but in general, it messes with an online store's data analytics and inventory and also leads to sites placing ads for their products in front of users that abandon carts under the impression that they're actually still interested in that product. Mm -hmm. In this case, that means wasting a bunch of ad money on people who have zero intention of buying anything. It's unclear what effect, if any, these TikTokers will achieve, but clearly they aren't done trying to mess with the president because he's reacting to the trolls. He is obviously yeah. upset. And also the, the thing is, is uh, uh, again, I don't know if this actually works the way they, they're intending it to, Yeah. but people who actually want to purchase things will have a harder time doing so because, uh, well... Hold on, we got a guy here that wants 12,000 Trump baseballs. Yeah. You sure? It might do nothing, but uh, the ads thing makes sense. Because mm -hmm. that, that's definitely happened to me a bunch of times where I'll, I'll be shopping for something and I'll ultimately buy it on a different website. But the website I was looking at it on first... Like, to this day, like, years later, I'll still see ads for, like, specific products. I'm like, yeah. I know exactly where this ad is coming from. Yep. Anyways, speaking of pranks... The whole concept of pranking has been kind of ruined over the last several years by untalented YouTubers whose idea of pranks is just being an asshole. Mm -hmm. But uh, this weekend, one of the greatest pranksters of all time reappeared for the first time in years, out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Up in Olympia, Washington on Saturday, a rally was held by a far-right militia group, and apparently none other than Sasha Baron Cohen managed to get on stage disguised as the frontman of a bluegrass group, performing a song... Uh, a bit reminiscent of a song that he performed as Borat over 15 years ago for the Ollie G show. That song, Throw the Jew Down the Well, was performed at an Arizona country western bar and obviously featured some very anti-Semitic and racist lyrics. But the crowd loved it and they happily sang along, outing themselves as bigots. 
Up in Washington on Saturday, the same thing happened, just with some updated and more timely lyrics. And again, the crowd generally loved it, and some of them even enthusiastically sang along. They were into it. Uh, lyrics included the following. Uh, Dr. Fauci, what we gonna do? Inject him with the Wuhan flu. Uh, I ain't lying, ain't no jokes. Corona is a liberal hoax. Uh, WHO, what we gonna do? Chop him up like the Saudis do. Liberals, what we gonna do? Inject him with the Wuhan flu. Um, yeah. So, yeah. The, the thing that sells it, I mean, he looks ridiculous to anyone that has ever seen any of this stuff before. He does look ridiculous. But man, the backing band, the yeah, whole setup, it really sold it. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, if he didn't have like just a guy on a stand-up bass just killing it behind him, this wouldn't have gone on. For uh, like eight minutes. Yeah. So yeah, but the, the song, it was very long. It was, it was nearly nine minutes long. The song's targets, it got a whole lot more racist as yeah, it went it, on. It ramped up. Yeah, you gotta, it's boiling the frogs. Mm -hmm. You gotta, gotta get it in there. Uh, and uh, surprise, the crowd, they got more into it. Check it out. Chinese people, what we gotta do? You can pop like you World War II. You can pop like you World War II. So I'm gonna say, Chinese people, what we gotta do? You can say, you can pop like you World War II. Chinese people, what we gotta do? You can pop like you World War II. Chinese people, what we gotta do? You can pop like you World War II. You can pop like you World War II. Wow, so that's wild. Mm -hmm. And uh, while this is likely something that's going to be appearing on the second season of the show, Who is America, with probably a lot more backstory and better camera work, what we do know is that according to the event's organizers, Cohen and his crew offered to sponsor the event at the last minute under the guise that they were a political action community. They would provide uh, audio equipment and security. Uh, so that's how they got on the stage. And then they escaped in an ambulance immediately <laughs> after the song. They just yeah. all filed into it and got the fuck out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, hilariously, though, it looks like the interview with the event organizer where he's explaining all this was actually being filmed by Sasha Baron Cohen himself in a second disguise as a cameraman. Wow. So yeah. Where was Nathan Fielder? Because he, he's a producer on that show too, right? Uh, yeah, he might be. Yeah, so he was probably somewhere running around in there. The thing is, though, currently, Who's America, they haven't even announced the second season. Why would they? That would blow the surprise. And, like, after season one, Cohen, he, he said specifically, like, no, nah, there's not going to be a season two. So, I don't know, maybe maybe just seeing how things have been going in the country the past, like, couple months, he's like, no, we're bringing that shit back. Yeah, I mean, what a better what, what better time than during an election season? Yeah. Where everything has gone wrong all year long. It's an opportunity you can't pass up. So, I, we'll, we'll, hopefully, we'll see the product of... Yeah. this performance sooner rather than later in whatever medium it ends up yeah, on. Yeah, if they were, like I just said, if they're going to even do a second season, there's no way they would make it public that they were doing it because they would want the element of surprise. That is true. And I'm really hoping they've got a lot of other stuff filmed uh, and under their belt by now because this exposes the whole thing. It does. Yeah, which sucks, but he, I'm sure he has plenty more characters that he can do yeah. people with. Now, um, let's move on, because uh, remember that uh, painting of Jesus in a Spanish church that was uh, restored back in 2012 by an elderly woman making it some sort of, uh, it looked like a, like a, like a, some sort of monkey, like the Ikea monkey. Yeah. The, the famous Ikea monkey that is, for some reason, still referenceable. Yeah. Well, it happened again, <laughs> everyone. A private art collector in Spain brought this painting here of Mary by Baroque painter Bartolome Esteban Morillo to a restorer to have it cleaned for 1,200 euros, only to have the 17th century painting returned to him looking like this. When did this turn into this? I hate today's standards. Yeah. So yikes. Uh, and unlike with other botch restorations we've seen, the second attempt at fixing this painting resulted in it coming out looking like this. Even worse than the first botch restoration. It's just regressing with each pass. Yeah. Like in, in the end, it's just going to be like an emoji. Yeah, it's just going to be like a circle, yeah. like a triangle. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this whole situation is apparently just so infuriating and embarrassing to the Spanish art conservation community that they're now proposing strict government regulation on artwork restoration. 
these latest Bosch restorations, they were done by a guy who mainly just restores furniture. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Not 350-year-old paintings. I could probably take a crack at it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, sure. So a representative of Spain's Professional Association of Restorers said, quote, can you imagine just anyone being allowed to operate on other people <laughs> or someone being allowed to sell medicine without a pharmacist's license or someone who's not an architect being allowed to put up a building? I can, uh, I can actually think of all of those things happening. Yeah, it's, he's describing like the libertarian uh, dream right there. Yes, yes. Get rid of all that regulation. But uh, yeah, sounds like in Spain, if you want to restore art, you're going to have to like get certified. You're going to have to have a badge. What do you mean unlicensed contractors are a thing? Yeah. What do you mean people sell drugs on the street without a pharmacist's license? But yeah. uh, when it comes to art, though, I think we should uh, yeah. really take a, d a deep look at this because yeah. you're ruining history. This, yeah, but this restoration, it's incredible. I, I'm a big fan of it. Unless the picture is of a racist. Yeah. And then ruin it. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got a few artworks I'd like to restore. <laughs> Anyways, another news over in Germany last week, a post office in Bavaria had to be cleared out due to do a suspicious package. 60 employees evacuated ambulance and police called. A dozen employees treated on site by paramedics with another six being sent to the hospital. Was this terrorism? Some kind of biological weapon? Well, no, but sort of yes. So it turns out that the suspicious package, it contained four durians. As we all know, the world's <laughs> smelliest fruit. And Ooh. the stench was so bad that the post office staff was very reasonably, they very reasonably believed that what they were smelling had to be potentially dangerous. Yeah. We're being poisoned. When I visited, when I went to Asia, there was like st literally signs made. Yeah, no with, durians. With a, with a, a null sign <laughs> over the durian. Get that shit out of here. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a menace. So yeah, durian is quite popular in some parts of the world mm -hmm. with some people. I mean, even in Southeast Asia where it's most popular. A lot of people find the smell sweet and pleasant, but a lot of other people find it absolutely disgusting, similar to like rotten onions and raw sewage. It's a real Rorschach test for your nose and taste buds, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, in 1856, British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace, he described it positively, saying, this pulp is the edible part and its consistence and flavor are indescribable. A rich custard, highly flavored with almonds, gives the best general idea of it. But there are occasional wafts of flavor that call to mind cream cheese, onion sauce, sherry wine, and other incongruous dishes. Then there is a rich glutinous smoothness in the pulp which nothing else possesses, but which adds to its delicacy. It is neither acidic nor sweet nor juicy, yet it wants neither of these qualities, for it is in itself perfect. It produces no nausea or other bad effect. And the more you eat of it, the less you feel inclined to stop. In fact, to eat durians is a new sensation worth a voyage to the East to experience. As producing a food of the most exquisite flavor, it is unsurpassed. I miss the old food bloggers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these, these days, it'd be a five paragraph summary of nah. their trip to Asia. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. So hey. anyways, me and my fiance, what we wanted to do was have one big blowout before the marriage and before kids came. Yeah. So we went over to Asia and, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you believe it, we end up in this market. And what a lovely fellow. We met yeah. this guy, he pulled this fruit out and it looked great. And then he would get into a, a much less yeah. succinct review. Just a bunch of pictures like doing the soy face next to the fruit. <laughs> have you seen this thing? We need to bring back the, 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 you know, more classy food reviews. Yeah. Um, anyways, in, in a less positive review, travel writer Richard Sterling said, quote, its odor is best described as pig shit, turpentine, and onions garnished with a gym sock. <laughs> now there is something yeah. that gets to the point. Yeah. Uh, the book, uh, The Oxford Companion to Food said, quote, Comparisons have been made with the civet cat, sewage, stale vomit, onions, and cheese. While one disaffected visitor to Indonesia declared that the eating of the flesh was not much different from having to consume used surgical swabs. Jesus. Mm. And uh, the late, great Anthony Bourdain said, quote, Your breath will smell as if you'd been French kissing your dead grandmother. Ugh. Great review. Uh, that's why he was the best. Yeah, in Asia, it's not uncommon to see signs specifically banning durians from public transportation and hotels, like I explained earlier. Yeah, they were steep uh, fines because they it's were like, everywhere. Yeah, because it, it they will fine you money. They might even lock you up because once you start eating that durian in public, that smell ain't going away for a while. Yeah, it just tastes so good. Everyone looks around on the bus and they're like, "Gotta mm -hmm. give me some of that durian." Yeah, they pass that durian, spread the wealth around. Oh, uh, in the airports there, they have like signs all over too. <laughs> yeah. Please, can we can we not do this? Get that shit out of here. Yeah. Well. I, a lot of people love it, though, despite its you know, complex flavor profile. And uh, it's led to a few other incidents similar to what happened in that post office in Bavaria. Uh, in 2018, there was a university library in Melbourne, Australia, that had to be evacuated because 
someone left a durian in a cupboard and everyone assumed there was a gas leak. Uh, and then a similar incident occurred at another university library, but in Canberra a year later, uh, thanks to a durian in a trash can that was near an air vent. So it just stunk up the whole fucking place. Uh, a 2018 airline flight in Indonesia almost had a brawl break out between uh, passengers and crew before the plane even took off because the 4,500 pounds of durian being transported in the cargo hold was stinking the entire plane up so badly the, ba- the passengers ended up successfully staging a mutiny, basically, and the yeah. airline was forced to remove the durians before a takeoff. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But hey, let's let's move on. We have a, another tradition to fill in with this mm-hmm. show, a, a recent one, but one that everyone seems to love. Let's watch some clips of people making complete fools out of themselves in public because being asked to wear a mask is the worst injustice they've ever had to deal with in their life. Starting with this Florida man at a county meeting in Port St. Lucie County. We are being lied to, our freedoms are being taken forever, and I will not be muzzled like a mad dog. And I will not have my health destroyed because you idiots can't figure, can't read truth. You go along with the lies that are the people who are trying to take down our freedoms and destroy our country. This is sick. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for being a part of this. And I will not be muzzled. And, my, and it's time for us to stand up for our freedoms. Because if we stand back and let these pieces of crap handle our freedoms, we will have nothing left. In fact, we'll end up being dead. Amen. Hey, I mean, it's it's nice to mix things up. It's a guy. Mm-hmm. Old Karen thing. Kevin. Getting a bit repetitive. <laughs> is Kevin the, the male Karen? I don't know. People seem pretty torn on what it is. Like, a lot of people say Chad because... No, Chad's like, its own thing. Yeah, Chad is a different kind of uh, yeah. aesthetic. Chad isn't necessarily bad. Yeah. Chad's just a hunky, buff dude who's handsome and women like him. There's good Chads, there's bad Chads. Exactly. So, I don't know. Kevin, male Karen, whatever. We've seen a lot of Karens. Nice to see a a dude here. But uh, we do also have a Karen for you this week. Yes. A local Karen, actually. A local Karen. So, this one is hilarious because uh, I uh, I had gotten up already and my wife was still in bed and she goes... Oh, my God, they opened a Trader Joe's near us. Yeah. And I was like, oh, really? Okay, do you want to go? And she's like, "Uh, by the way, you should see this video from it. This is the only way we found out that a Trader Joe's opened within, like, a certain radius of where we live is that a on, like, almost, it must have been opening day or the day after. It was literally opening day. uh, This lady went in and just caused a fucking scene. Yeah. But it was hilarious. And, and Clark Wolf posted the yeah, same thing. Yeah, she's like, oh, this is a weird way to find out there's a new Trader Joe's in And it was trending. And like, so I got yeah. to see who my neighbors all were. <laughs> it was yeah. great. So here's your local, your local North Hollywood Trader Joe's, Karen. Y'all, Karen is showing out in Trader Joe's. She does not have on a mask. And somebody said, fuck you, leave. And she is having it out. Trader Joe's. This is day one. This is opening day of Trader Joe's in North Hollywood. This is Karen. Woo! And so what's also funny about that is there are, uh, apparently there's two kind of similar reports about this woman in particular. Oh, she... One, one said that she went to a different Trader Joe's without a mask, but no one gave her shit, so she just left. (laughs) Oh, so she's looking for trouble. The other one kind of puts some weight into that because uh, people were obviously there. It was opening day, so there was a lot of people, like, you know, checking things out. Said that this person obviously thought that she was a bit weird because she walked in and immediately took the mask off. She Because yeah. they were checking people at the front. You couldn't come in right. without having the mask on. So she had it on. Someone noticed that she had a, a, like put it, took it off and was just walking really close to people and like trying to go to reaction yeah. and then also never put anything into her basket. As you can clearly see, she throws it. It's empty. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it said about like took five to ten minutes before someone finally uh, said something and that's when she just unleashed. Yeah. And the person that said something was just like, hey, by the way, um, your mask fell off. Yeah, they <laughs> they see this as like civil disobedience, like uh, yes. like doing a sit-in. <laughs> Did you see the guy from Runyon? No. We what? should have the guy from Runyon. Okay. Nothing illegal and against the Constitution. You are against the United States by promoting a mask. You sure. tell me all you want. I'm gonna sure. film you too. This woman right here is working for Parks and Rec. 
forcing people to wear a mask. This is going to Bill Barr's Department of Justice. Sir, she is forcing I people to wear a mask, wear which is mask. absolutely not a law. You can, I have my lawyers ready to go. Bring it on. So there you go. Yeah, it's uh, no signs of slowing down. It's local now. Great. Yeah. Did you see that fucking uh, that, that uh, taco place in uh, Hugo's Tacos? Yeah, where they're like people are throwing yeah, things at their employees. To, they had to shut down completely because they're just like we. Uh, our employees are like they're at their fucking wits end because all of you fucking assholes keep coming in without a mask and like just yelling, making people. these people's lives awful. So uh, we're closing for a couple days. I don't know if we want to show another clip, but there's another clip that I saw this morning where the lady gets asked to leave and she just stands there and literally throws every single item that's in her cart. See, I saw that and I couldn't. I couldn't verify like where it was. I couldn't or when find, it happened. Yeah, I couldn't find any information on it. But, well, it uh, exists. It's out there. Yeah, she's very upset. Yeah. But hey, before we get into this week's weirdest headlines, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Wouldn't it be great if every clothing store you shopped at had only your size, what styles you liked, and the price that you wanted them at? Well, Stitch Fix is a company focused on making that happen. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling company that makes getting the clothes you love effortless. It's a completely different way to shop that's all about you every time. To get started, go to stitchfix.com weird to set up your profile, and they'll deliver great looks personalized just for you in your colors, styles, and budget. You pay a $20 styling fee for each fix, which is credited towards anything you keep. Schedule at any time. There's no subscription required. Plus, shipping, returns, and exchanges are easy and free. Stitch Fix does the hard work for you, making great style effortless for everybody, including men, women, and kids. Get started today at stitchfix.com weird. And you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in that box they send you. Stitchfix.com slash weird. And this episode is also sponsored by Raycon. Whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you want what you're listening to to be what you're listening to. Not what your roommates, your neighbors, your kids, or coworkers are listening to, or just chattering away. Mm -hmm. Everybody, they you all need a great pair of wireless earbuds. But before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you should check out the wireless earbuds from Raycon. So you already know that Raycon earbuds start at around half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. But their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise-isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable, perfect for conference calls or binging podcasts. That's what I do. I go on... Long, very long walks uh, every day to yeah. try to like just be active without like going to a gym or They're anything. They're great for walks. And, and just then, pop it in, listen to it from podcasts. And if someone calls you, just pick it up. Yeah. Works great. Hang up. I'm surprised at how good they sound on yeah. the other end, too. So yeah. they're stylish. They're discreet. They got no dangling wires or stems to distract anyone during video calls. Now, Raycon, Raycon, it was co-founded by Ray J, and celebrities like Snoop Dogg and Cardi B are obsessed with these Raycons. Pick up a pair and see what all the hype is about. And uh, now is the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. You'll get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash weeklyweird. That is buyraycon.com slash weeklyweird for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash weekly weird links in the description now for some headlines mm -hmm. a lot of coronavirus headlines obviously sorry wisconsin county with rising covid19 rate to host herd immunity fest with static x and nonpoint and i believe i believe nonpoint has backed out yeah they they got rightfully shamed for this uh, absolutely tone deaf and Terrible idea. nonpoint was just like yeah we don't want any part of this static x still involved and they changed the name to just like mid-July fest or something yeah. generic like that. But uh, this is a terrible idea. If you're going to any sort of music festival, even if it's outdoors, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? I mean, Nonpoint, listen to a few tracks. They're fine. It's great. I don't know anything about it. Static X, fine. One I didn't know tracks. Static X, they, were, they had that one song. Push it! <laughs> yeah. Wayne Static, the, so. he had that like uh, ridiculous big, celery He looked like haircut. the Slim Jim man. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Nonpoint had the, I'm working harder than a hundred mag mules down in Mexico. No water, no shelter from the hotter than hell. No dinner, but I don't know. I, it's an old, it's th at this point, a 20 year old song, probably. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but hey, the, probably a big old weekend concert. Yeah. Not the best idea. No. Uh, I, I, you probably won't get this name because you've never seen The Bachelor. But Chase Rice did a, a concert over the weekend where, uh, let's just say, social distancing guidelines were in the back of everyone's minds, not in the forefront. Great. Uh, country star featured on The Bachelorette last season. Okay. Uh, 
Probably not a great, great person, considering he was fine with getting all these people together. Yep. Uh, next headline. Co-founder of Reopen Maryland says he has COVID-19, but won't help contact tracing efforts. <laughs> yeah, that's that scans. That seems about right for the type of person who would uh, hold reopen protests and then yeah. get sick. The government's yeah. like, hey, so would you be willing to provide us with you know anyone you've been around lately? We, so, just so we can tell, so we can the, tell them that yeah. they have been Or exposed. the business that you went to. No. No, don't tread on me. I mean, we had a scare. I called up Elliot and yeah, I was our like, bank. Uh, I was like, hey, uh. Yeah, we had to pay uh, for our accountant and uh, and the bank sent an email and was like, just so you know, uh, we had someone who tested positive for COVID in the in the credit union or whatever. And then I was like, oh, God. And then called Elliot and I was like, blah, 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 because we had to go do this thing. But I read further and it was like, so we disinfected it and then reopened on like, the 25th. And the 25th yeah. is the day I went. So I was like. Phew, but it's fucking crazy out there, folks. You, it is. I mean, there's... It's scary. I had to go to the bank. I have to go to the grocery store. And yeah. when people choose to go have parties at their friends or go to concerts or something and then go to the bank or the grocery store, they put everyone at risk. Stop. Yeah. California police seeking woman who intentionally coughed on one-year-old baby after argument with mother. <sighs> what is wrong with people? Yeah, this one, it's, uh, it's unclear because the woman who did the coughing, she had a mask on. And then she was apparently she got mad at this woman with the baby for being too close to her. But also a lot of people think she was just being fucking racist because the woman she coughed on was speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they're like, there was a lot of other people that kind of crammed in there. Not the same distance from her, but the people she decided to cough on were the only ones speaking Spanish. I venture to say this woman has a lot of problems with a lot of people. Probably. Yeah. Except no problems with herself, though. But uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to be like, you're not socially distancing enough. And like, oh, sorry. You're like. Well, so I'm going to cough on you now because I care about, wait, I, d I don't know. I'm not really consistent about my well, thoughts it's, on this it's virus. Those, it's that thing, too, where, like, when people's brains snap into, like, primal I'm going crazy mode, th the thought process isn't there. Yeah. Everyone has had those moments where you're, like, either so angry or you just reach a tipping point where rationality just goes out the window. Mm -hmm. And this is, a lot of these are those things, but there, a lot of people, I don't know if she was looking for it, a lot of people seem to be looking for this rush. Mm -hmm. Like the Karens that we see at the Trader Joe's. Because they, they've never been out. oppressed in their life. And they're, it's like their first chance to feel marginalized in any way whatsoever. They're uh, getting off on it. The best part of the Trader Joe's Karen is that like, She's screaming for like five minutes straight, and then it's like, "My doctor says I have breathing problems," which is why. Yeah. I can't, and she's just, just belting out the she's screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah screaming. Like, it sounds fine to me, lady. Yeah, I don't know. Also, there's curbside pickup, so maybe just do that next. Yeah, time. that's the that's the thing. These people they don't understand the fucking law at all. No. Basically, like the the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, all it requires of businesses is to make a reasonable effort to accommodate. Customers. They don't so, have to let you in. They can bring you your yeah, groceries. So that and like it, every every video I've seen of someone bitching about having to wear a mask, the manager comes out and he's like, "All right, well, like, tell us what you're shopping for, and you know, we'll we'll make it work. We'll bring it out to you." They're like, "No, no." I like to browse all the colorful characters in the cereal aisle before I pick out my box. Yeah, and I there's like apparently one of these fucking Facebook groups. They designed this card like the oh like yeah coronavirus like the card. Fake, yeah it's like uh you actually have to let me in it's like the people like that stitch like a uh, uh, support animal on like a yeah. vest for their for their dog it's such bullshit just yeah. just fucking wear the mask god damn it it's very easy cambodia's new tourism rules include three thousand dollar entry deposit to cover coronavirus costs including your funeral cool maybe yeah. you'll think twice now yeah i mean it's uh so it's, it's basically if you test positive while there and die there. Yeah, well, they, they test everyone when you show up. So mm -hmm. everyone coming into Cambodia for the foreseeable future has to spend 24 hours in quarantine after you're tested. If you test positive, they then have to treat you because they can't put you back on a plane to leave. So this would cover your treatment. Mm -hmm. If you die during treatment, this would cover the funeral on top of that. But also, like, if a single person on your plane tests positive for coronavirus, the whole plane, the has, to whole go, plane yeah. has to then go into 14 days of quarantine. So that's... Two straight weeks at a hotel, you can't leave. So that's the deposit covers that as well. But if you manage to get through that whole gauntlet, they give you your money back when you leave. Okay. So uh, kind of all seems not worth it to me, but... It's just upfront travel insurance. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And may, might actually be less skeezy than travel insurance. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, <laughs> you know what you're getting for the, the amount of money yeah. you're paying. And guess what? If you don't use it, unlike travel insurance, you get it back. Yeah, I mean, and we're probably going to see this kind of thing more and more, yeah. especially for Americans. Oh, what happens when you come here? Probably fucking nothing. Go enjoy. Yeah, yeah. join up. Oh, you're going to go see Hollywood Boulevard? Great. Get a get a convertible. Cool. Yeah. Just breathe in that clean Los Angeles air. <laughs> yeah. San Antonio Police Union president says, God damn is as offensive as the N-word. Yeah, some cop in San Antonio, like his body cam, captured him just like calling some dude the N-word repeatedly. Yeah. And uh, got in trouble for it. And so the, the police union, they're like, well, I don't know. The mayor... He said the GD word recently at a yeah. press conference. So, a bit hypocritical <laughs> to be going after this officer for saying bad words. And he says equally offensive bad words himself. Mm. Like, you know, glass oh, houses, wow. pot calling the kettle black or calling the kettle something else. Yes. Well, let's see uh, if he gets away with it. Yeah, he will. The cop is back on the force. Oh, Surprising. Yeah. Devin Nunes loses legal battle with Twitter cow. I forgot about this. Moo. So it, it's just, uh, Devin Nunes is just terrible, terrible U.S. representative from mm-hmm. uh, California. Central California. Yeah. Terrible person. But he, uh, some Twitter account that's just like Devin Nunes' cow was just, just an, mocking him. Yeah, just making fun of him. And he tried to like sue Twitter and Twitter the account. Twitter and like the account. And just like this huge lawsuit over like, and it's just completely nonsense because it's like Twitter, he's simultaneously arguing that Twitter is censoring conservative voices and he's calling for censorship of just a random joke Twitter account. Yeah. So, isn't there, ideologically like, wasn't there, like, inconsistent. There's Devin Nunes's mom Twitter account too or something. Yeah, as well? I think he was suing that one as well. Yeah, probably going to lose that. But uh, yeah, the court threw it out. They're like, what are you, fucking 11? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Devin Nunes. Yeah. Jesus. We agree with the cow, actually. Yeah. You're kind of a bitch. Man's bladder explodes after holding in pee for 18 hours after beer binge. Well, so was he doing this on purpose to try to get one of those long peas? No. It, this is like in China, I think. Hmm. The guy had like eight beers and then fell asleep. And like woke up 12 hours later having not peed. And that, don't, the, that doesn't make sense. We would pee his pants. You would think, but uh, he didn't. He woke up the next day and he's like, oh, God, I feel terrible. I need to pee. But by then, it had already ruptured. And, oh, uh, no. Yeah, his like whole fucking digestive system was like fucked up. Like he could have died. Yeah. They, they saved him. Probably his track's probably a little shorter than it used to be. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go to pee before you go to sleep. I mean, I don't or know how it is happen. over there, but uh, here in America, not enough places to pee. Not enough. Whenever I have to go, nowhere to go. Yep. Especially bad if you're having one of those rumble tummy days. Yeah. Just got to do a little Joey salads. Just <laughs> recycle it. Save it for later. Yeah. Right in public. Buy yourself some time by drinking your own piss. <laughs> <laughs> by the time it comes out, it's just sand because yeah. you've recycled it so much. Yeah. Lord of the Rings series puts out casting call for hairy, burned, and funny looking actors. <laughs> in New Zealand, send, specifically. Yeah. Hey, New Zealand, send us your, your biggest uggos. Just... Just every fucking weird looking person. Come on I, down. We want you on like our show. In New Zealand too, like the, the casting culture just be like, hey, you know, not the biggest country. So if you know someone that looks ugly yeah. as shit, tell them about it. No, no hotties. We're not looking for we're not looking for Hollywood types. We're looking for Wellywood types. Unfortunate looking ones. Hairy, yeah. Yeah. ugly, maybe if, burn, maybe missing some limbs. If you, you or know? someone you know is ugly as sin, <laughs> yeah. send them our way. I want to see that casting call. I want to see the room and all the people lined up. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. They're going to get paid, bro. Yeah. Get and, paid? And, and it's great. New Zealand, they've they've bounced back so so well. They're resuming, like, production. Not going to happen in L.A. They, are, with, we just <laughs> closed bars again. Same with yeah. Texas and Florida. They were they were planning on reopening production in, like, mid-July. Yeah. And that is 100% not fucking happening. No, anymore. we all ruined that. Every, yeah. every American is responsible for this. Yeah. Even the ones that stayed inside, I guess. Yeah. Because we did the right thing and we still got punished. Yep. Damn. Dead 80-pound iguana found in freezer at West Palm Beach Pizza Joint. 80 pounds. That's fucking big huge. Big fucking iguana. A lot of meat on that. It's a iguana. big freezer, too. Yeah, it sounds like, sounds like the owner, like, his, just like his friend found a, a dead iguana or killed mm-hmm. it. And he's like, hey, can I store this in your 
just do restaurants fridge for a little while. I'll come back for it. Yeah. And they happen to get a health inspection that day. Oh, damn it. It always so, happens uh, this way. Yeah. They had to throw out a perfectly good 80-pound iguana. You hate to see it's it. It's going to make a lot of good iguana asada iguana with that. But, uh, yeah. Now it's wasted. Yeah. Trump administration paid millions for test tubes, got unusable mini soda bottles. Yeah, there's been a bunch of, like... Frivolous spending that... Yeah, like, weird, like, where it's like they could have... They could have ordered test tubes from an actual, like, medical supply company, but they ordered... So the things they ordered here were um, basically these tiny bottles that turn into, like, two-liter bottles. Yeah, by, they're, they're hard plastic that when they expand, it turns yeah, into you, the Yeah, you blow, thing. like, hot steam they're into slugs. them. slugs. And they, they form in... Yeah, yeah, basically. So they ordered those as test tubes for, like, coronavirus tests. And the doctor's like, we can't fucking use this shit. Like, it's not sterile. Yeah. It's not... You know, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this fucking thing? Yeah. No, but we got it for cheap. Cheaper yeah. than the other ones. It looks the same. Yeah. Pretty it's clear. You can see through it. Yeah. Meanwhile, they've just wasted millions upon millions of dollars doing yeah. the there's, wrong There's been a thing. bunch of little stories like that of just like random little vendors just striking it rich. Yeah. Uh, off of government contracts. And it's like, is the government stupid or is this just like some weird like way to do kickbacks for your friends? I think it's kind of both. I think they're like, they're trying to like, cut money they're trying to like not spend as much because they think they're smarter than the experts who say that they actually yeah. need the items that they need like now nah, we can do it cheaper yeah it's like when elon bought those ventilators yeah it's like here you go my job is CPAP done CPAP machines these are for sleep apnea yeah they, nah, they, it's done. they blow the virus all over the place <laughs> nah they're ventilators yeah uh leeds united apologizes after osama bin laden cut out appears in crowd <laughs> yeah one of the most recognizable humans on earth I point. don't know. I mean, they probably got some Zoomer running their uh, their website. That's the guy was, from South Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just this crowd of cutouts, you know, because yeah. they're filling the stadiums with, they're letting, like, the fans submit it. And it's a, it's a cool little stunt they're doing. But yeah. some wise guy put Osama Bin Laden in the crowd, and it, they didn't catch it. There was, like, another another team had, uh, it's like, one of Britain's most infamous serial killers nice. was, like, Perfect. sitting out there. Yeah. Yeah, not cool, guys. No. You're ruining, a, you're taking a fun little thing here. You're making it sinister. Well, I wonder if the MLS will do the same thing. Because, baby, they're coming back July 13th. That LAFC, is, let's do it. not happening. Nope, totally going to happen. Total, Everything's going to be nope. completely normal. We're going to get MLB, MLS, NFL, NHL, NBA, everything, baby. Stop trying to make 2020 happen. 2020 is not happening. No. The year is canceled. This year is fetch. Uh, NYPD commissioner says officers who drove into protesters did not violate use of force policy. And I believe we showed this clip when we were showing all these clips. But yeah, it was just a fucking NYPD SUV just driving into a crowd. And they're like, well, I don't know what we were supposed to do. And they're like, I, well, you could have backed Clearly, up. it was the car using the force and not the officer. Yeah. 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 It's like <laughs> There's got to be some stipulation deep within there where they're like, technically the officer didn't well, that's how, do like, anything. When you see like... When they, when news outlets write about like officer involved shooting, which the, even that term is like ridiculous. It's all, always using like passive voice, where it's like man killed by police bullet fired yeah. from police gun. It's like no, he was killed by a cop who shot him. But it's it's it always uses this passive voice that takes away any like human responsibility. So yeah, wouldn't be my surprise. Wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, they were like, well, yeah. The car, the police car plowed into protesters. Yeah. As Dale Gribble once said on King of the Hill, guns don't kill people, the government does. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, hey, the NYPD has investigated itself and found no yeah. wrongdoing. <laughs> uh, last headline, petition circulates to replace Columbus statue in Cleveland's Little Italy with Chef Boyardee. Which sounds ridiculous, but Chef Boyardee, apparently a real person, and... Came to Italy, or came from Italy to Cleveland, mm -hmm. uh, and started the Chef Boyardee company. The land we, of cleavers. That we still know and love today. Yeah, the ones uh, that I stocked up on at the beginning of the pandemic that I still haven't opened up yet. He's a, Chef Boyardee, a much better representative of the Italian-American immigrant the dream. success story yeah. than Christopher Columbus. Columbus, you could barely even consider him Italian. He was from Genoa, which eventually became Italy, but he was working for the Spanish. He never made it to the continental U.S. He, he landed down in the Caribbean and called it a day. After, and then just like, like murdered people. Yeah, murdered, raped, raped people, a bunch of people yeah. and then got like 
uh, even his own, even like Spain, one of the most fucking like ruthless. Uh, like, dude, you're being a dick. Like, hey, <laughs> cut that shit out. Yeah. You're making us look bad. Yeah. And that's where we, we had an inquisition. Yeah. You're and making then, us look bad. And then everyone here is like fucking. Remember that Columbus? What a great person. Hey, Chrissy C. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, we agree with this. I, I am loving all of the like creative solutions to these statues because like. Modern problems. Need modern solutions. Most people, I didn't know a lot. Most people probably don't know Chef Boyard. He was a real person, a real American success story, and he w- was from Cleveland. Yeah. I bet people in Cleveland don't even know that. They've had to just stare at Christopher fucking Columbus this whole time. The one reason a statue does teach history. Yeah. Like, that Chef Boyard was a real person, and damn it, he lived here. Yeah, in Columbus, Ohio, the home of Guy Fieri. Yeah. The everyman chef. Fieri. This is America. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyways, uh, we hope that they put that Not statue Not even his up. real name, either. What is it like, Todd Stevens or something like that? Yeah, it was, like, it was like his. It was like his grandfather's last name that he adopted. Perfectly well within his rights to do so. Sure. Yeah. But I'm not going to pronounce it the Italian way, sir. His name is uh, Johnny Garlic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this week's uh, episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, it's your last chance to get our masks. Oh, yeah, still going. Uh, I think it stops tomorrow morning at some point. Uh, again, very nice mask. Made in the USA. Uh, has a little pocket there for your filter and only available till tomorrow. So uh, the link will be in the description below. Get your mask. Otherwise, check out our most recent videos over here. We got a Tech News Day and a news dump, and the mystery still stands. As of the time of this filming, we don't know what the fuck's going on with Dr. Disrespect. Yeah. But uh, unsolved mysteries. Yes. Anyways, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>